In a matter of next few years, we will have AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, which is just a euphemism for superhuman AI. When I interact with people from Hungary, from, from Poland, I see the hunger. They want to build it. They want the country to get completely detached from ghosts of communist past that get into the neo-tech. Dr. Ellie David is so interesting. We're doing multiple interviews with him, and this interview is going to be focused a little bit more on some of the uh, non shit posting he does, some of the actual job creating he does, which is a very holy role that someone has in society. The dude's an entrepreneur in Startup Nation. Tell us a little bit about some of your entrepreneurial ventures, and then we can talk about the ecosystem. Great to be here. What I'm doing for the past two decades is artificial intelligence. Now, I've been doing that when it was not popular to say that you're doing AI. And of course, now I'm happier that AI is what everyone is doing. Quite a bit. So I'm doing the multiple roles at the university. I teach, supervise students, PhD students, founded several companies in different sectors, cybersecurity, AI acceleration, additive manufacturing, healthcare, but it's all around AI. Yeah, no, we, we had dinner the other night and I was amazed at the breadth and scope of knowledge you have across sectors, obviously all with the technological component, but across the sectors of use cases for high tech or technology, AI is now the big three, big data, quantum computing and artificial intelligence. There's a nexus of the three of them. They feed on each other so you can make the tools that are going to take, you know, web 3.0, 4.0, 5.0 to iteration. Uh, what are you working on right now? I know we, we talked about it offline, but what, you know, what you can, I'm sure you're on stealth on something because, hey, we're adventure <laughs> land. But what you can talk about, what, you know, you can talk about to the greater world that, you know, might be helpful that people learn about for your business. I think we're the, one of the most exciting points in technology in, in modern history. I look at many companies, I've worked with many VCs, private equities, looking at companies, doing due diligence. I see so many exciting companies under the radar. Actually, I think right now is a bit similar to the late 1990s. The sense that back then, late 1990s, almost everyone knew that this new technology that's called the internet is going to revolutionize the world. Everyone could guess that in two decades, the largest companies in the world would be internet-based. Everything will look like different, but almost nobody could predict how exactly this revolution would look like. You know, most companies founded in late 1990s didn't succeed, and companies like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft was, Amazon and others, they came yeah. afterwards. The same right now. Everyone knows that AI is going to revolutionize the world. Everyone knows that next two decades will look completely different, but it's still difficult to predict how exactly the revolution will look like. And that's one of the exciting things. We are at the dawn of this practical revolution. There have been several technological revolutions that have changed the global economy and as a result have led to a higher level of human flourishing, have unleashed economic forces, animal spirits. There was the Industrial Revolution, which was precipitated, which which emboldened the, the building of railroads. So we had, you know, commercial traffic that allowed us to open up oil. You had the automotive revolution and then telephony in the 1920s. And then there was the 1990s with e-commerce as well as mobile telephony. Now with AI, big data, quantum computing, there's a risk for these previous revolutions the thought was, it's all gravy. We're going to be that much more efficient. We're going to create that much more wealth. We're going to be that much more healthy and comfortable and live longer. But now there's a little bit of a nervous underbelly to AI and quantum computing because we may be doing some level of Schumpeterian creative destruction that creates physical revolution on the ground with job destruction. How do you answer that to you know some of the people who are saying, no, we have to be very wary of this. And I know you're a tech guy, so you're thinking forward. How do we reconcile this? You know, in the early 20th century, thousands of people were employed by the city of London. Every evening, turning on the lights manually, uh, yeah, yeah, the the, uh, and, and then <laughs> turning them off the next day. When electricity came, they all became bankrupt. Uh, they all became unemployed. Uh, and many similar companies became bankrupt. In and the those... buggy whips as well is famous for the guys who draw the horse-drawn carriages. Exactly. Yeah. So with any every new technology, especially with AI, we will see... Uh, some waves of uh, job losses, but many more jobs will be created for using AI. I think the, at least for the next decade or two, it's difficult to prophesy beyond that. The biggest role of AI will be to empower humans. 
empower human physicians, human engineers, human lawyers, every profession. So you will need humans that have the skill of knowing how to work with this AI. And when we're talking about AI, in a matter of next few years, we will have AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, which is just a euphemism for superhuman AI. So we must be ready for the prospect of working with our assistants that are much more knowledgeable than us in our profession, they are much smarter than us. And we need to develop the skills to work with them and make the job more efficient. You and I have spoke offline in depth about the healthcare revolutions going on, the diagnostics that are going to come from this, the accuracy, the dosimetry, how you uh, dose cancer therapies, because everybody's cancers are different, react differently, is going to be incredible. But the job destruction, okay, will have new ways of applying. What about the ultimate dystopic risk case? Convergence on uh, uh, what's the Turing test and the machines are going to take over Terminator 2 style. Do you worry about that? I do. And what worries me even more is that I think it is not difficult, but impossible to prophesy what will happen beyond the next decade or two. So we will have smarter machines. Imagine ChatGPT4. Imagine how much better ChatGPT5 will be and 8 and 9 and 10. Of course, we have Microsoft, uh, Google developing their own, which I'm sure will be just as good, and many other companies. So. At some point, they will be not just as smart as we are, or a bit better. They will be orders of magnitude smarter. The way I like to look at this is that our brain, our neocortex, the smart part of the brain, has about 100 trillion connections, synapses, connections between neurons, 100 trillion. The largest artificial neural net, AI, ChatGPT4, now has 1 trillion in a matter of a year, two, we will have hundreds of trillions. Moore's law. Yeah. Then thousands of trillions, millions of trillions. And very soon, we will have artificial beings that are has that have brains a thousand times, a million times more capable than ours. And I constantly remind myself that the only difference between us and other mammals and chimpanzees, that's with, it's the same brain. We just have more neurons and connections. And that small difference results in the fact that we have built this world and the chimpanzees are essentially the same. You can interview a chimpanzee and ask him to predict what humans will do. It will be futile. So sometimes I worry that when I'm trying to predict that I am the chimpanzee or trying to predict what that much smarter than me entity in the hopefully distant future Will do. But yes, I am worried. Well, you know, the difference between us and chimpanzees, and I do believe in Darwinian uh, origin of species and evolution, but there is the idea of the spirit and the soul, which I also believe in, and we are created in God's image. If we start creating beings that are more in, that have so much brain power that essentially they might develop a soul. Now, it's not a God given soul, it's a man given soul because they can now think, they can iterate, they can even maybe even feel. We don't know what that's going to evolve into then aren't we playing God and it's almost like the Tower of Babel? In some sense, we may be playing God here, but this is not the kind of technology that, not that I think it should be stopped, uh, that even if, let's say, the US, Israel and the West decide we're pausing AI development, all that means is you're letting China sure. take the lead. Now, developing AI... What we saw in stem cells, by the way, with embryonic research under George W. Bush, so where did it go into Singapore? And it's much easier to develop advanced AI than even embryonic cells and uh, research there. It is much easier to develop soon superhuman AI than to develop, for example, nuclear weapons. And nuclear weapons is an extremely dangerous thing that we managed more or less to regulate in the Western world. Still, there are under 10 countries in the world that have that. Uh, because there are lots of process involved in that, even though the technology is from 1940s. For advanced AI, all you need is some publicly available data. And right now, GPUs, hardware, uh, processing uh, capability. So any country can do that. You invest money, you have advanced AI. So I don't think it makes sense to pause AI. By the way, recently that was considered, I was one of the vocal ones against that, against a pause in AI development. 
Instead of pause, we need to take charge and decide what kind of AI we want, what kind of uh, safeguards we, we would like to put in place. That's our best chance of channeling it to increase the likelihood of this doing more good and decrease the likelihood of this being um, less good. Look, we could have a long discussion about regulators regulating. Regulators are reactive, entrepreneurs, technologists. Uh, those who start any sort of venture are forward thinking and they're going to break a mold. Regulators have to react to it. I worry about the dangers of something run amok. Of course, we hopefully will have regulators on the ball and this technology is going to march forward no matter what they say. Uh, that's just the momentum of humanity, the progress that we, we innately work toward. Uh, let's shift gear for one sec because we only have a few minutes on the Israeli tech ecosystem. This is Startup Nation. Uh, we've met with many, many great entrepreneurs, people that I've been reading about for years. It's been an honor to meet guys like you and Michael Eisenberg. Uh, and you guys have built something special here. You guys have a, the opposite of a brain drain. You've got a brain agglomeration, especially coming from the US and Europe. Uh, you know, we, we joke about the Jewish brain and, you know, it's coming here to actualize what it can create. It all boils down to the DNA of trying to do the impossible. And David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, said, we do the, uh, the difficult, we do immediately the impossible takes a bit more. But that's the mindset here. That's the mindset when trying to defend the country and then trying to do startups. Actually, every founding startups is something a bit crazy. When you start a startup, essentially you say, well, everyone in the world has not figured it out. I'm the only one. It's a crazy thing to say. Kind of classic. And, and usually yeah. it is crazy. Most startups fail. It's about the odds. But because we have that, that culture here of trying to do the impossible, trying to do the difficult, um, see every second Israeli is either has already done a startup or is doing a startup or is going to do uh, Investing in a startup. A startup. Right. So the culture here is uh, very friendly to that. And then we have all the ecosystems developed around that. Uh, we have many VCs, not only Israelis, but every good VC in, in the West or North America has strong presence here because, you know, good companies here, international companies, for example, the leading chip de developer in the world, NVIDIA, they have a huge presence here. Intel just announced that they're expanding their plans Google's here. here. Applied Materials is here. Amazon, here. Microsoft, yeah. uh, uh, all of them, Facebook, they have a huge presence here because all the talent is here. At least a talent per capita. I mean, you can still make the argument that I, I, like we were talking about earlier, you know, Prague has got some great VC talent. Krakow has some great VC talent. Hey, Budapest, there's been some great companies coming out of the Budapest. So again, it's also a frontier mentality, right? Coming out of communism, hunger to build and willing to take risk and know that there's pain points and danger and risk. Uh, it does foster that. So here is definitely a brain agglomeration, but there's lots of pockets. Still. Definitely. Um, yeah, Israel right now still is by far the uh, leading with startups per capita. Per capita absolutely. But uh, it's interesting you mentioned the central, uh, central and Eastern Europe because I'm very bullish about that. It's about mentality. We have extremely bright people in every Western country. We have in, in France, in Spain, in Portugal, everywhere. To have startups and successful tech companies, you need even more than smart people, the culture. And when I interact with people from Hungary, from, from Poland, I see the hunger. They want to build it. They want the country to get completely detached from ghosts of communist past that get into the new tech. So I'm much more optimistic about Warsaw and, and, and Prague and uh, uh, Budapest becoming the next yeah. uh, Tel Aviv. Sofia, Bulgaria has got some crazy interesting stuff going on. The animal spirits is a bolus of energy. <laughs> exactly. And all these places, Belgrade, you know. These are the countries that are hungry for that. And so I'm very optimistic about them. So, you know, we talk, the, the Silicon Valley, one thing they did really well, it was in their self-interest to incubate, to incubate and then accelerate. And I do this with some of the companies, especially Angel, very early. Some have failed. It's always painful, but that's part of the process. But, you know, Y Combinator wrote the book on incubate and accelerate. Israel's doing that a lot. There's some incredible incubators and then accelerators. They start the idea and then they help put, you know, gas on the fire when there's growth and create the contacts, the network effect, the biz dev, the client intros, the cap intro, all of that. So talk about that ecosystem here. I'm a big proponent of small government and empowering the industry. We have some amazing incubators in Israel that they're all from the ground up, came from industry. 
from entrepreneurs that created those incubators and there are many strong companies coming out of them. The most well-known, I guess, is Team 8, that many successful companies have come out of that. I have seen some Western countries that government is trying to start that. It almost never works. And here too, I think what the government has been doing well and should keep on doing is giving tax incentive for investment incentive. I don't think the government can help much by direct involvement. Reduce government, reduce bureaucracy, reduce taxation, and let the industry do the work. You know, a model I've seen that I like a lot, not cash direct investment, not, you know, we're going to be on the cap table, we're going to take down 3% or do it on a matching base, anything like that. Rebates on, on headcount expansion. Get them to employ educated people and say, we'll pay some of your salary expense post facto so we know it's not getting you know spent on Maseratis, like in Ramallah. We want to see jobs created and innovation done in an organic way without the government putting its hand on the scales. We all remember Solyndra in the US. So it's, uh, it's great to talk to you. It's great to be in this ecosystem. I, I have some Israeli companies I'm invested in, especially in biotech. I want to do more, and I look forward to us. Making we will make sure. Thing. We will make sure you will invest more in Israel. It was a pleasure speaking to you.